uh, we we hope to discuss uh, particularly on the fourth type of nutriment but uh, first of all let me uh, give a little summary of what buddha mentioned in this ahara sutta basically buddha mentioned that chattaro me bikkave ahara bhutanam va sattanam pitya so for the maintenance of already arisen beings it is necessary to have various food various nutrients and not only that sambhavi sinam va anugrahay so for the assistance of those about to come to about to come to be so there are certain beings who are now getting birth maybe in the womb and for them also it is necessary to have certain amount of nutriment so that is also discussed here <coughs> so those with the mention is not just the edible food but there are four different kinds of food all together so the first one is quite uh, easy to understand that is the edible food it could be little gross or it could be subtle but anyway it is the edible food one kabaling kara ahar second one is called the pass ahar where the contact as a nutriment third one is mano sanchetana ahar the nutriment mental volition as a nutriment and then the last one is the consciousness as a nutriment now actually when we were discussing typical uh, edible food that is something that we all can understand but the other three is quite difficult to understand it is only maybe available in the buddhist teaching and uh, if one has thorough understanding of these uh, different kinds of food different nutrients with the mention and different levels of understanding different levels of attainments are quite possible so have having deep understanding of these different topics the subjects may be practically is quite useful and therefore that's why we are trying to get some uh, theoretical understanding about them and again uh, without limiting to theoretical understanding we should uh, try our best to practically understand them as well now as i mentioned the first one is edible food easy to understand but if we consider the contact as a nutriment we all know that through our eyes we are looking at various sights through ears we can listen various sounds through nose we can smell various odors through the tongue we can taste various say uh, flavors through the body we can recognize various sensations maybe various tangibles and again through the mind we also can recognize various mental objects so these are the six uh, sense bases through which we are communicating with the outside world and we prefer to have that time to time i want to look at a tv i want to look at i mean a maybe a, a movie so likewise we eager to look at through our eyes so through ears we want to listen to music so our nose we want to smell some uh, good fragrances through the nose to the to the tongue we want to enjoy some delicious food maybe through the body we want to have some soft sensations tangibles so that is also there if none of them are working then we want to think maybe something good or whatever that mind mind prefers to think so likewise uh, through these senses we want to get occupied every time so therefore we can consider it is some sort of absorbing or partaking different kinds of food maybe sounds maybe sights maybe smells tastes tangibles and again various thoughts various mental objects and on the other hand if you consider mano sanchetana ahar that is the mental volition we always uh, motivated to do something i want to do something i want to think about it i want to tell it so likewise i mean uh, we are always geared to do something we are motivated to do something and some others also will motivate us to do something suppose that you are keeping idle for some time then others may come and uh, motivate you why don't you do something so likewise this volitional activities can happen because of our own initiative or it those can happen because of someone's influence persuasion 
but anyway we have to pay for that because mental volition contributes or cause to generate karma so if we do some wholesome activities then we can reap uh, some favorable results on the other hand if we engage with some unwholesome activities then we have to go through some unfavorable results so mental volition therefore is sometimes uh, working not in favor but rather uh, doing some harm to us because most of the time our volition is not purely our own but uh, it depends on so many other conditions so many other influences even though say i am telling okay this is my decision this is my selection so this is what i do this is what i am talking this is what i thought so all these volitional activities has a fair influence coming from various outside uh, components outside reasons causes as a result of that ultimately we are the ones going to suffer so the last one is what today we hope to talk in detail so that is even subtle and it is called vijnana ahara the consciousness as a nutriment now why buddha talks nutriment consciousness now before getting to that subject let me uh, take you to a different understanding different way of looking at our mind so we only know about the mind which is uh, thinking suppose you are not much familiar with meditation particularly the vipassana meditation say we then aware of a mind which is constantly thinking and constantly occupied when we are thinking certainly there are various mental images also appear in the mind and more and more constructions also happening in the mind so fair amount of time our mind is occupied so this thinking probably we may stop only during the sleeping time so even there if we are dreaming there may be a certain amount of mental activity going on so we can't stay even a minute without thinking and we prefer thinking we prefer conceptual proliferation and even when a thought comes to the mind we are not simply allowing it to pass by rather we add our own stuff to it we decorate it we multiply it we add to it we delete to it so likewise we do a lot of constructions modifications fabrications so that our mind is constantly occupied now in order to do this there is a kind of an internal world that we are preparing so i have my own perceptions i have my own uh, kind of extractions coming from various things that i have seen what i have heard what i have smelled okay what i have tasted what i have, have sensed so a lot of uh, pre data or previous data is available in my data bank time to time i am enjoying them or maybe i can even enjoy something uh, projected towards the future so therefore our thinking constantly uh, going from this end to the other end from past to the future and very rarely we think in the present moment as well we try to be in the present moment as well anyway this thinking machine never stopped we constantly pump fuel to that now when we are thinking when our mind is occupied if you consider carefully so mind has no space suppose your mind is something like a, a playground so that playground is constantly occupied with some kind of players they may be they are, uh, say the same players different players coming from different villages different countries so constantly occupied by different players and we consider that uh, having those players is a kind of a blessing so constantly our mind always latch with certain forms so what i have seen what i have heard what i have uh, sensed to the nose tongue and body and what i have cognized to the mind so i have a fair amount of such data already available similarly there are various feelings 
so if those uh, form related data are not enough so i can enjoy various feelings maybe i am enjoying some pleasurable feelings maybe painful feelings i have to go through maybe neutral feelings are also there so i may be sort of established on those feelings and maybe we have different perceptions okay he is like this my sister is like this my brother is like this my husband is like this my wife is like this so about many people we have different perceptions and in order to recognize people or in order to recognize various objects we have a lot of uh, data lot of say remarks lot of signs marks through which we do this recognition and those also fairly stored in our mind and time to time we start consuming them so our mind basically establish on all those data so either it may establish on all those forms data so that means sights sounds smells tastes tangibles so those are the more gross kind of uh, data <clears throat> so our mind can establish there as well on the other hand uh, it can either establish on feelings pleasurable feelings neutral feelings painful feelings that is another subject again it can establish on various perceptions various marks so when you are thinking so there are various perceptions already promoted in your mind and you are imagining various mental images are appearing in your mind say there's a, you are thinking about your friend then all the past memories good uh, events that you have spent with him or her so those are now coming or appearing appearing in your mind so those are very much like mental images so constantly occupied so your mind can establish on those perceptions as well mental Im images as well or on the other hand you are fully engaged with uh, constructions so you are thinking maybe about the past you are thinking what has happened you are imagining about the future designing planning about the future so you are fairly occupied with that kind of mental constructions mental formations as well so therefore in upaya sutta available in uh, khanda samyutta in samyutta nikaya connected discourses of the buddha therefore buddha make a very interesting uh, statement that is rupa upayang va bhikkave vinyanam tittamanam titteya rupa ramanam rupa patitta monks this uh, consciousness either engage or stand upon various forms and not only standing upon it may have some sort of a delight because of this kind of a firm establishment and uh, further it starts thriving there by using various forms it starts thriving there growing there so that it is fairly established firmly established and further buddha mention vedana upayangva bhikkave vinyanam tittamanam titteya sometimes it may establish on various different kinds of feelings suppose you are going through some pleasurable feeling so you are fully engaged with it you are in that world so these feelings have come to the uh, very front so they are the predominant ones so your consciousness is established there and there it is finding its footing it's growing there now on the other hand buddha mention sanya upayangva bhikkave vinyanam tittamanam titteya so different kinds of perceptions are there mental images are there various marks are there signs are there so you get interested there and now consciousness is established there it is now growing there so it has find lot of fertilizer to establish then sankha rupayangva bhikkave vinyanam tittamanam titteya so different kinds of mental formations are also there when i as i mentioned when a simple thought comes to your mind we don't simply allow it to pass by we do lot of constructions lot of additions multiplications so we are fully occupied with that kind of an activity so your consciousness is established there and it find its footing there it find its kind of a nutriment there now you can see the consciousness have four places to establish either on forms either on feelings either on various perceptions signs marks or either on mental formations now what happen when consciousness establish like that 
it causes rebirth. Suppose at the, that moment, if your mind consciousness established on any of these, so it causes regeneration or producing a new life. And uh, on the other hand, would the further mention, so these are the four bases, four kind of uh, establishments. Other than these four types, there is nothing else. Now, when Buddha mentioned uh, these kind of consciousness is established, on another way, Buddha explain it that it is always established on name and form. Nama Rupa. Now, this is a little tricky subject that we are dealing with. We typically say, okay, I am looking at a particular person. On top of that, my mind is established. I am hearing particular sound. There, my mind is established. I am going through some smells, taste. So, there, my mind is established. Consciousness is established. But on the other hand, if you little come closer or go a little deeper, come to the source, sometimes we can say, when we are looking at the particular person, it is not really the person that we see. Actually, what we see is a certain image appearing in our eye. Now, this is a little scientific. Say, when we are looking at the tree, so there is an image being produced because of light and various this uh, light rays coming through that particular tree. And then it prepares a kind of uh, inverted image in your eye. And then the brain does all these uh, constructions, changes, preparations. So in actual terms, that is what we are actually knowing, actually experiencing. But we forget it and we immediately attribute it to an external person. Similarly, when there's a sound happened, there's a little fraction of that, an image of that sound is what appearing on our eyedrum, sorry, eardrum. So likewise, there is a, another level working on this uh, subject. So there's a significant contribution coming from our brain, contribution coming from our mind into these all different kinds of experiences. Now, rather than looking at outside, how if we look at our own mind, so that is where Buddha mentioned, so this consciousness is dependent upon name and form. So now you are not <clears throat> looking at really the outside object or outside forms, outside smells, tastes, etc. Rather, they produce kind of an image in our mind. So that is where the name and form, Nama Rupa, comes to be. So gross forms may be available outside, but from there we extract certain kind of an image. So that image is what appearing in our mind, helping it has to produce as a form part, rupa part. And on top of that, we have a certain amount of feeling, certain amount of sign attributed. Then probably we can have a very primary level of chetana, volition. <coughs> and again, uh, and there's a contact, of course, heaven, pass available. And you are now turning your attention towards that. So when defining this uh, Nama Rupa, therefore Rupa part, the form part, have that kind of an image extracted from that gross form available outside. Say four elements available outside. When we consider name part, it has Vedana, Sanya, Chetana, Passa, Manasikara, feelings, perceptions, volition, contact, and the adverting of mind as their, their ingredients. So you can see little subtle aspects are there. So we are coming to the very root of our mind. So always name and form, therefore, has a condition, has a footing prepared to establish the consciousness. Let me explain you this through a little example. So actually this example is 
very beautifully explained by most honorable Katukurunde Nyananda Mahathero. So let us think about uh, cinema. Assume that you are going to see a film, a cinema, and maybe it's uh, daytime. So since it is daytime, all the doors are closed, all the windows are closed. And if it is the perfect situation, then you can't see anybody. Suppose that you are sitting on a chair, but you can't see anything because it is pitch dark. Now suppose from the projector that there is a light beam projected onto the screen. Now there is a kind of an incident being portrayed on the screen. Now what happened is that uh, we immediately get attracted to that particular scene and there may be kind of a beautiful uh, scene going on. They are loving, kissing, enjoying, singing. So many things are happening. So we being fully distracted there and we are enjoying that. And while you are enjoying that, assume that there is another scene. Now we can connect the previous scene with the next scene that we do within ourselves. And assume that that particular scene also now deleted now a new scene appear on the screen so we can connect it so internally all these spectators they can do this uh, connections so we are eagerly waiting to see the next event next incident okay the next incident happened so we are eagerly waiting to see the next incident so likewise so we have this always inclined mind kind of an internal inclination towards next incident so again and again, so the different projections, different uh, say incidents, events are projected onto the screen. Now we do the internal constructions. We are enjoying a particular film. So we are now in a particular world. So if it is a love affair being portrayed on the screen, okay, we are in a loving world. So if it is a fight really being portrayed on the screen, okay, we are in a little excited world. Now suppose all of a sudden those doors and windows are open. Now what happened? So immediately huge amount of this sun rays coming and striking on the uh, screen. As a result of that, the previous very colorful images are being faded away. Now previously we were fully indulging with those uh, different images but right now because of this very powerful sun rays now the whole screen become white and all those different multiple color images are being deleted faded away now all of a sudden we understand okay we were seeing a film it is a fabrication it is a fiction I am on a cinema hall, I am on a chair. Now you come to the reality. Now you come to your senses. Now you feel a little dispassionate because you were in an imaginary world prepared by all those different uh, events projected onto the screen and you consider at that time those are real and you are enjoying that. But now all of a sudden you are on your seat. There are other spectators as well and there's a screen as well now if you combine this whole scenario to our mind so typically our mind is occupied with a kind of different series of events and we are enjoying them or we are trapped in them and we consider them as utterly important and we give them life and now we are fully engaged with it and we are maybe crying maybe quite happy worrying regretting or being excited because different events are being shown in our screen but later suppose you are able to calm down everything then you look at them objectively they are not really events rather they are thoughts they are mental images, they are different feelings. So likewise, now you are looking at in a different angle. So as you are doing that slowly, so this whole thing 
complicated thing start to become dilute and now you feel dispassionate and thoughts are now coming one after the other you can recognize each one after the other so as a result of that you feel more dispassionate now your mind feel more spacious and probably there may be a situation your mind completely become blank there is no thoughts even now all of a sudden your sort of orientation change so you were in a kind of a dream different events projected by different thoughts constructed by different thoughts constructed by different feelings constructed by different perceptions but all those incidents are now slowly faded away and now you have a different kind of a perspective different kind of an orientation now you are fully aware but with a empty mind you have kind of a dispassion towards all those events even a new event happens you have kind of a dispassion because you have gone through it so rather than being trapped in it now you know they are they have the nature to come and go you don't need to really claim it as mine now in that simile in the cinema simile say the availability of screen is only possible or we can understand when kind of a image being projected to that but in order for the image to get projected you need to have a screen so therefore we can say this screen and the image projected on top of it have a interrelationship they are internally dependent interdependent similarly in our mind also when we know okay there's an event there's an incident so that is where the name and form is available in our mind and then only we know okay i am living i am i am seeing i am thinking i am imagining i am planning so you all of a sudden feel like i am living so always so name and form is necessary for the consciousness to establish it's a kind of a interrelationship is there name and form and vijnana nama roopa and vijnana name and form and consciousness they are for tightly interwoven tightly interdependent and when we were sari put to say they are like kind of a uh, say two sheets connected together so it is explained in the uh, another sutta which is called uh, uh, yeah nala kalapa sutta so they are uh, like two sheaves of reeds might stand leaning on onto another because if you take one the other one falls to take this the the other one also falls so they are quite interdependent so similarly when the sariputta mention vijnana paccha nama roopa nama roopa paccha vijnana so consciousness is dependent on the name and form name and form dependent on the consciousness so it has a kind of an interrelationship but the gravity of this problem is that when they are operating like that when your mind has kind of a mental image as well as perceptions little chetana volition when your mind is turned towards a particular direction now these mental activities are available consciousness are established name and form and consciousness are in operation but it doesn't stop there it conditions these six sense bases six sense bases condition contact contact conditions different feelings feeling conditions craving craving conditions uh, say grasping so likewise the complete say the participant samupada dependent origination coming to the being ultimately a huge suffering going to arise now dangerous part is that we want to think we want to occupy our mind so we are very much like addicted to occupy our mind you can't simply keep your mind empty probably you feel uh, boring you want to do something or you want to think something you have to have something available in your mind so all of a sudden that uh, say if your mind become blank then you might feel afraid feel frightened 
Now suppose while you are enjoying that movie in that cinema simile, so you are fully involved, fully engaged in an exciting uh, scene. Suppose you are fully there. While you are there, immediately if the doors and uh, windows are open, you feel completely lost. You are in a completely different world. Now all of a sudden you come to the reality, okay, now I am on a chair. Something like that. So understanding this interdependency between Vijnana and Nama Rupa is therefore quite challenging. It requires fair amount of training. And on the other hand, we are constantly have that desire to occupy the mind or the occupy, to occupy the consciousness. So that helps again and again this consciousness getting trapped it at different levels of name and form. But we, we consider it as necessary, it's required because of our ignorance, because of our avijja. Now, in order for us to give a, some understanding about this operation, Buddha gave a very interesting simile in the Putta Mansa Sutta. So he say there is a kind of a bandit, kind of a thief. Now he being caught by uh, say uh, soldiers. And now that particular crim criminal is being taken to the king. And these soldiers are now asking, great king, now this is a bandit, this is a criminal. We found him and he has done all these uh, criminal activities. Please give him whatever the punishment you want. Then the king ordered his uh, soldiers, okay, uh, strike him with hundred spears during the morning. Now the people agreed and they want to implement the king's order. They take that uh, criminal towards a particular place. They strike him with hundred spears. <clears throat> Now then again during the afternoon they come and report to the king and king is asking uh, what is going on is that a fellow is still uh, alive then the other soldiers they report yes still that guy is still living then king order okay strike him another hundred spears so they implement that plan as well. They strike another hundred spears. So in the evening they come back to report to the king. Now the king is inquiring, is that fellow still living? Yes, Bhante is still is living. Yes, Majesty, he is still living. Then strike him another uh, spears, hundred spears. Then they implement that order as well. They strike another hundred spears. Now Buddha asked from the monks, what do you think monks, are these, th are these 300 spear trucks going to hurt this thief? Then the monks of course answer, why not Bhante, it is not 300 spear trucks, even a single spear truck is quite painful, it can make him even really uh, fatal, really painful. Then how about 300 spear trucks? Then Buddha mentioned, this is the way you have to look at the new Priman consciousness. So why Buddha is giving this kind of a simile? Now if I ask from you, in the morning, how many thoughts that you have enjoyed? How many thoughts came to your mind? How many mental images came to your mind? In the afternoon, how many mental images, how many perceptions, how many thoughts came to your mind? Is it 100? Is it 200? So in the evening, if I ask you the question, how many mental objects, how many mental images, how many volitions, or how many different uh, mental images coming to your mind? Is it 100, 200? So you can see from the very moment that we get up, 
we start thinking, we start occupying our mind and we consider it it's like an opportunity but there is no break for our mind. So there is no rest. We never heard about the kind of rest to our mind. Now through the practice, therefore Buddha help us to come to a different side or kind of a paradigm shift happen because of the practice. Now, Buddha mentioned in this uh, Upaya Sutta, as I already mentioned, either consciousness to establish, you need different kinds of forms. For it to establish, it needs different feelings. Or it requires different perceptions. Or it requires kind of mental activities, mental formations. Now, now how about calming down them? How about reducing them? Say you are keeping your eyes closed. You are going to a very silent place. You are not tasting, you are not uh, having any food. Your body keeping silent, still. And slowly you are trying to calm down thinking. In a chatter, rumination. So that also you are now calming down. So slowly what we are trying to do is to reduce giving food to their consciousness. That name and form part, we are now reducing. We are not giving enough uh, different forms, sight, sounds, smells, taste. So we are not giving. Similarly, we are not uh, sort of purposely generating any feelings. Maybe we are not trying to get various mental images. Even if they come, we let them go. And we are trying to minimize thinking as well, mental constructions as well. So in Vipassana meditation, so this is where we are trying to approach slowly, methodically. We are trying to reduce name and form which is provided towards the consciousness. By the way, why are we having different kinds of feelings, perceptions, forms, mental form formations to the consciousness? Because of our greed, because of the craving. On the other hand, we can say, when we are reducing craving, consciousness may not have much kind of food, name and form. So ultimately it is possible to have a mind which is not established, have a consciousness which is not established. So it is very, very beautifully mentioned in uh, say this Upaya Sutta, let me refer Buddha's words. That means, uh, suppose that you are doing Kaya Anupasana. So while you are doing Kaya Anupasana, you are trying to understand the reality of different elements. Earth element, fire element, water element, air element. So these are the forms. And you are trying to understand their true nature. As a result of that, whatever the passion you had, whatever the lust you had towards different forms, so that covers all the sights, sounds, smells, tastes and tangibles. So whatever the desire, whatever the craving you had towards them is now slowly fading away. Sukha Anupasana. Suppose you are doing Vedana Anupasana. So you are trying to focus your attention to different feelings. So as a result of that you understand their true nature. How impermanent they are, how inconstant they are, how vulnerable they are how non-governable they are. So slowly you are understanding their true reality, true nature. As a result of that, now you don't bother even. If it is a pleasurable feeling, you don't care. If it is a painful feeling, you are not much bothered. Even if it is a say, neutral feeling, you can simply be with it. So likewise, now you slowly become dispassionate towards different feelings. Say different perceptions. Say when different images, mental images appear in your mind. So rather than you are trying to give any prominence to them, any value to them, you now look at them objectively. You step back and look at them objectively. Okay, you understand. They are merely perceptions. They are merely mental images. 
I don't have to promote them. I don't have to give life to them. I don't need to attribute a person to them. This is mental image. So you have that proper understanding, that wisdom. Rather than constructing on top of that mental image, you recognize it as a mental image. Objectively, you are able to look, look at it. As a result of that, now you have a fair amount of dispassion towards those mental images as well, perceptions as well. Now what happened, they also start fading away in the mind. Now you feel little spacious. Previously the mind is fully occupied with many different mental images, one after the other. But now because of your practice, now less mental images and even it comes you are fully aware, you are not adding any value to it, you are not promoting it, you are not, not getting deluded by that and now slowly it fades away. Now you feel more comfortable, more relaxed, your mind starts resting, your mind feels peaceful, less agitation. So these are the kind of healthy benefits that you are feeling, experiencing. Further, you are minimizing the volitional activities as well. So through mindfulness practice, through samatha practice, through vipassana practice. So slowly you are minimizing volitional activities as well. You are not going to construct. Say a particular thought come to the mind. You stop adding to that. You stop coloring that. You stop fabricating that. Rather, you recognize it as a thought. It's a lustful thought. It's a thought of ill will. It's a jealousy. Okay, this is a, a worry. This is a doubt. So you give the proper name. You know exactly what it is. So rather than you being trapped in it or being deluded by that, so you know it properly, wisely. As a result of that, now they also fade away. They minimize. So what is the result? Rupa dhatu yache bikkave rago pahino hoti. So because of the kayanupasana practice, you can minimize the greed or the lust towards many different forms. To Vedana Anupasana, you can minimize lust, greed, attachment towards various feelings. To Chitta Anupasana, Dhamma Anupasana, you can minimize whatever the attachment you have towards various perceptions, mental formations. As a result that what is going to happen? That the link between name and form and consciousness. Probably you can remember that I was mentioning there's a strong relationship, interrelationship between name and form and consciousness. Now that link going to break because of this practice. Then Buddha mentioned Ragasa Pahana Vachijata Ramanam Patitha Vinyanasa Nohoti. Because of this practice, the passion, greed, or lust reduced. Instead, now the dispassion arise. As a result of that, that link going to break. Then Patitha Vinyanasa Nohoti. So the establishment of consciousness not going to happen. For Vedana Anupasana also Buddha mentioned like that. Say now the possibility of establishing consciousness on feelings, now you are trying to minimize. Ultimately suppose that link is broken. When you are trying to establish on, uh, when the consciousness is trying to establish on different mental images, perceptions, that is also broken. When various mental constructions are there, mental say thoughts are there, there also mind can establish that also being stopped and therefore that link also also broken. Now what's going to happen? Buddha mentioned, now consciousness is unestablished. Tang vinyana. Now we are coming to a completely different domain. So far, consciousness is constantly entangled, established with name and form. But now, at least for a temporary time, it is not established. Tang vinyana. 
avirul hang. Now the possibility of drawing the consciousness is not available. Anabi sankhacha vimutta. So those constructions, conceptual proliferations, your own additions, that is also stopped. As a result of that, mind get released, consciousness get released. So far it was entangled with name and form, but now it get released. An interesting point, vimuttatta titam. As a result of this release, now consciousness stands still. Consciousness remains still. Our mind was constantly jumping from this to that because of inner agitation, inner craving. But now temporarily that being completely stopped. So as a result of that, consciousness comes to a kind of a standstill. Titatta Santusita. And Buddha mentioned now probably if you have the proper perspective, if you are well understood, you know the theory, you know exactly what is going to happen. You are well prepared. When it happens, you may feel contented. Titatta Santusita. Santusitatta na paritasati. As a result of that, when mind released, when consciousness unestablished, when consciousness released, you are not getting agitated. You are not fearful. What is the result? Aparitasam pachattangeva paramid bhayati. If you are able to maintain this, again and again re realize this, again and again establish or rather try to make the mind unestablished, consciousness make unestablished, you are not uh, getting deluded by various name and forms, you allow it to pass away, slowly you can abandon all the defilements, ultimately one can attain even alhamsi. Therefore, Buddha mentioned, if one understand the nutriment consciousness, he may understand the name and form, Nama Rupa. And uh, name and form have that uh, interrelationship between consciousness. So all these intricacies you are going to understand. Which is so deep, so subtle. So if one have, if one have that understanding, we can become an arham. So you can see it's a very powerful teaching, difficult to understand, and we have to have a lot of practice to recognize this whole operation. And uh, if you are able to do that, so that is the understanding of the nutrients. If we have that proper understanding, slowly all the different kinds of raga anusaya, that means underlying tendency to greed, start fading away. Patigahanusayam patiminodetta, all different ill will, those tendencies start fading away. Asmiti ditti mananusayam samuhanitta, different personality views, I am, the conceit, all starts fading away. Avijjam pahaya vijjam uppadetta, so you abandon ignorance, instead you now have wisdom. Dittevadamme dukkasanta karohoti, within this life you, be, you are capable of ending of suffering. So you can see, it's a so deep teaching. Difficult to understand, of course, but slowly, if you are trying to understand these different uh, nutrients, maybe the edible food, contact, mano sanchetana, that is the mental volition, and today we discuss the consciousness nutriment. Then we are in a fairly rich area of vipassana. So, if we can look at how these nutrients are working within our mind. How different types of craving are conditioning these different uh, nutrients. How we unknowingly even partake these nutrients. How we have kind of a tendency to occupy the mind. Why can't we keep it empty? Why we want to always clutter our mind? Why always we want to have thoughts in our mind? Why we always want to have mental images in our mind? When a particular thought comes, why can't we simply let it go? Why do we want to fabricate it? So these are the lines that we need to explore. We ourselves have to think, so why are we doing this? 
for what reason? So if we look at in that angle, then we explore Buddha's teaching. We start searching what are the mechanisms, what are the methodologies available to calm down all these constructions, to minimize all these unnecessary nutrients. For that actually we need the Patipada, we need the proper path. That is why Buddha mentioned uh, you need a proper practice for that. That, that is nothing but the Noble Eightfold Path. So if you know the nutriment and if you know the causes of nutriments, if you know the cessation of nutriments and again if you know the path leading to the cessation of nutriments, so that is Samaditi. That is another way of Samaditi, proper view, correct view. So the path leading to the cessation of nutriments is nothing but the Noble Eightfold Path. So in order to fully understand, fully attack this whole process, you need morality, sealer. You need fair amount of uh, mental culture, say that is samadhi, mental development. And further you need to develop wisdom, so that is vipassana or panya. By employing this noble eightfold path, one can have cessation to those four nutrients. So these are very interesting but very deep but these are I mean mentioned by the Buddha and he asked us to explore, reflect about this rather than simply following our, our, our kind of addictions or than simply following our own uh, cravings, how about step back and look at all these processes. That is where the mental culture, the mental development, bhavana is involved, that is where the vipassana is involved. Inviting all of you to have a try, give it a try. So that is the Dhamma inviting you, it is not that I am inviting you basically. So Dhamma invites, ehi pasiko. So Buddha's teaching is so deep, so beautiful, with a lot of similes, he articulates it, beautifully explains it, help us to understand it. And that Dhamma invites us to come and see, put it into practice and see. So with that invitation, I like to conclude today's Dhamma sermon. Thank you very much for attentive listening.